we are all caught in this dilemma, this tension of knowing what should be done and the capacity to do it. So, for most of us, we tend to be weak. We give in to our weakness. We give in to our lust. We give in to our emotional ties with people whom we love. We give in to what people think of us, what people expect of us. And we are caught because we are afraid to make decisions that will offend the people that we loved because there are emotional ties. And very often, we are blackmailed in many ways because if we insist on doing the right thing, we might lose support, we might have enemies, they might tear us down, they might destroy us. And so we tend to live a life of compromises. We know it is not the right thing. We know it is not a good thing. And what is the consequence? Consequence is, of course, a guilty conscience. When we have a bad conscience, a guilty conscience, we tend to hallucinate. We tend to lack peace in our lives. There are many of us who do not have a good sleep at night. Because our past comes back to haunt us. Our guilt comes back to haunt us. And so many of us, and I know there are quite a number of people, who have constantly nightmares. Nightmares actually are nothing else but all the insecurities, the fears, all our woundedness, our hurts, they tend to resurface in our dreams. If we try to suppress the conscience, the conscience will somehow be manifested in all our dreams. Even if they are not manifested in our dreams, certainly in our own life we will find there is a lack of peace. We are restless. All of us will come under God's judgment at the end of the day. There is no escape. Not only at the end of the day we come under God's judgment, in fact, God is always judging us at every moment. Our conscience is judging us for every action that we take. And that is why this restlessness, this lack of peace in our hearts. Of course, that is the final judgment. And because we are under judgment, then we have to decide what do we seek. Do we seek real peace, true peace, or do we seek temporarily peace? Are we clear about how we want to live our life? And that's a question, therefore, we need to answer for ourselves. We have people who could inspire us. We have mentors. Do these people return for direction, return for inspiration? But it's difficult to find authentic leaders in life. They are rare. But if we find them, then of course, when we see how they live their life and the peace and the joy and the love in their hearts, then perhaps we will want to imitate them. If you have peace, you tend to be liberated. You tend to be welcoming. You tend to be warmed. And there is a certain joy that radiates from that person. If there is no peace, we just only exude frustrations, anger, irritability, and very often retaliation. So as we pray for courage to be authentic, courage to be at peace with ourselves by standing up for the truth, by living a life of integrity, we know we cannot do it on our own strength alone. We have to do it through the help of the grace of God, through the leaders that we know, and of course, through the love of our brothers and sisters. God comes to us in different ways, sometimes even through strangers, sometimes through a word that we hear, sometimes through 
inspiration. And every time when we hear this, we are called to reflect. We are called to pay attention, to see how ready we are to be open to the will of God.